What's up, everybody? It's your favorite unfiltered motivator, Miranda Evans, and you are here for episode five of Motivation with Me. So, guess what? Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. So, today we're going to talk about sex and celibacy. Hey, so I've been waiting on this video for the longest, okay? Because this is a topic that we definitely need to discuss. I mean, let's get into it. So nobody submitted any questions. Nobody said it, submitted any requests. So I'm just going to have to go off the brain like I always do and try to pray and hope that I reach somebody today. We're on a touchy subject, so I expect everybody to have their opinions or whatever the case may be. I mean, we're talking about sex, so yeah, that part. Um, First, book quote, as always, Renewed Strength, my book that you guys know about. Um, So in this book, I actually have a chapter called Love, Sex, and Relationships. And I promise, like, that did not happen on purpose. Like, I didn't come up with a thing based on the book. It just kind of happened. Because love, sex, and relationships are, like, my expertise. Well, everything's my expertise. But definitely love, sex, and relationships. So, in the book, I say, sex plays a major role. Sex plays a major role to the love process. Physical intimacy creates a connection the minute we act on it. Even if you only have sex with someone one time, it is still a connection. You're not going to always feel the connection because it may not be the connection you were looking for. Once you have sex with someone, they become part of your inner privacy. It allows the other person to enter into your personal space and your body. It's the reason that we find it easier to let go of someone we haven't had a physical connection with than someone we have. So sex first of all sex is wonderful okay this is not a i hate sex people think just because i'm celibate i'm like a nun or something and i'm like completely against sex no sex is natural we're humans we have hormones we have i mean it's a part of life even my 83 year old grandmother <laughs> told me it was a part of life and when i told her i was celibate she was like why so it's look listen it's a thing and we need to talk about it especially like with teens and when they get of age because with me and my story i lost my virginity when i was 14 and you know i was a very promiscuous teen and i it stemmed from okay let's backtrack i was molested from 12 to 13 by my stepdad right so I didn't become troubled until after my molestation. And though after it happened, me not having a father, I started looking for love in men. And I thought love meant sex because I wasn't taught what love is, what sex is. My mama didn't have the birds and bees. kind of like We ended up having the conversation, unfortunately, because I saw something I shouldn't have seen. So I thought it was a bad thing and she explained it to me and that's kind of like how it happened. It was kind of like on the spot. So I didn't really get to experience the whole like birds and bees conversation and really just talk about sex. So it's like I kind of just experienced it on my own and taught myself. Um, I lost my virginity when I was 14, like I said. Um, a little bit after I was molested and I had my first boyfriend if you read trouble then you read the story but it's kind of like I was scared because I thought that my stepfather was going to rape me and on the other side of it I kind of just wanted to get it over with I was very easily persuaded I was dating a guy who was like in my neighborhood like living behind me we were in high school I think I was in ninth grade like you know, he was fine. I just listened to whatever he told me because, again, I had daddy issues. I had was dealing with abuse. And abuse victims, they either do one or two things. They either become promiscuous and become highly sexual active, sexually active, or they shut down sexually and they don't, they stay away from it. So I was, I was the first. I was the promiscuous one. And that's when I really became troubled is 
you know, when I was 14 and after the fact. So it's like, once you do it one time, you get that attention. It's kind of like, oh, okay, well, you know, I like this. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know how to deal with my issues. So I dealt with my pain by having sex. And I'm not ashamed of my sex life. You know, it's in a book, first of all. So how can I be ashamed? Um, but yeah, I was promiscuous. I was, I call myself Rumbles a reformed hoe. Mm hmm Yep, I was. I was out there having sex with a bunch of men. Usually they were older men. I was 15, 16, having sex and dating dudes. They were like 20-something, um, sneaking around, like going to dudes' houses. Like, I'm telling all this is in the book. Like, this is this comes to no surprise to people who know me. But if you don't know me, now you know. So I'm not one to bash sex. I always tell people, look, I done had enough sex in my lifetime to where four years of celibacy is nothing for me. Like, I done been there. I done done it. I done had every experience you could possibly think of. Like, yes. And for a long time, I was really just disappointed. And I felt like I was being used. I felt like I wasn't worth anything but sex. Like, dudes only wanted me for sex. And... I was just confused and I didn't, I just didn't know who I was as a person. And so sex was my life. Like that was my outlet. That was who I thought I was supposed to be. I thought that as a girlfriend, I have to please my man sexually when I was in a relationship. And when I wasn't, it was kind of just like, that's how I dealt with the pain. So, you know, it. I come from both sides. I come from the promiscuous side and I come from the celibate side. I come from the old me and I come from the new me, you know, and a lot of my celibacy, the decision to become celibate comes from the fact that I had so much sex as a teenager and as uh, in my early 20s that it's like I need I want something more like I, I just can't. What, what are we doing? Like, are we just having sex? Because I was more so like the guy. I was the one who like, listen, we're going to have sex and then I'm out of here. <laughs> like I ain't got time like as I got older like after college then I was just kind of like excuse my language but fuck them and leave like straight men mentality because I'm like well men do it to women all the time so hey I'm gonna do the same thing and you know me I keep it unfiltered and real on this channel so I'm gonna tell y'all straight up this is what it was like I just want sex period I don't want love. I don't want a relationship. I don't want none of that. I don't been in a relationship. It didn't go well. So, no. I just, let's just do our little thing. I'm going on by my business. And so, after a while, they got old. And I was like, it got to the point where I was literally having sex. And I was just like laying there like, okay, we're just going to be over it. Like, I was active, but it's like, nah, I ain't really feeling it. Like, mentally, I wasn't there. And so I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this. Like, I need that mental intimacy. I need a mental connection. And this is when I started to discover who I really was. This is when I started, you know, I wrote my book and I kind of just got it all out. And once I did that, it was like, okay, I have to, once I figure out who I am, then I can be able to love somebody else. But I couldn't do that because sex was just, that's just all I did. Like, that's all we all do. Like, I know the dudes that's watching this, like, I mean, I can't go a week, but... And I've talked, like, literally, I could write a book on how many dudes I've talked to about this, how many people have been in and out of my life. Like, people ask me questions about celibacy all the time. People ask me sex questions. Look, I got all the answers for you. Whatever experiences, then and now. So, and I was having a conversation with a guy the other day, and he made a good point. We were talking about celibacy. And his thing is, you know, I've been... And then he said he's been celibate before, but we're going to get into the difference between celibacy and abstinence. abstinence. Just give, give me a minute. I'm getting there. And he said, you know, God also gave us free will, which I have to agree with. Even though he says, God says not to have sex until you're married, he also did give us free will to make that decision on our own. So ultimately, it's your personal decision. It's you not whoever else, like nobody else affect your decision. It's your decision. And if that's not what you want to do, then don't do it. Like, that's one thing I'm not going to do is tell people, oh, you need to be celibate. Oh, you need to stop having sex. Oh, you need to do it. No, 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 no. Because that might not be for you. This is my life. I don't expect everybody to live the life that I live. So if you want to have sex, go ahead. Do your thing. Like, no, I'm not going to judge anybody. I'm not going to say what you're doing. That's against the Bible. And, da, 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 and God says this and God did. Because, listen, Jesus Christ died on the cross 
so we could be free and so we could be forgiven for our sins. You repent your sins unto the Lord and all is forgiven and your transgressions. And then, but also you got to practice forgiveness as well. So you live your life how you want to live your life. I'm not around here promoting celibacy. I'm just telling you, this is what I'm doing. This is Miranda Evans. Miranda Evans is celibate. And I have a blog on my website called the Single, Saved, and Celibate Series. And if you read that series, I talk about the process. I talk about the peer pressure, the temptation. I talk about my loopholes because I did create loopholes within my celibacy because by definition, celibacy is to refrain from all sexual acts. And I was still having oral sex. So there's a blog where I say oral sex is sex too. So I've made my mistakes. I've had to deal with them. So I'm not perfect. Okay, I'm not perfect. No, I have not had sex, vaginal sex, in four years. But I have made mistakes that I've had to deal with in my personal vow and with my relationship with God. So my point is, you don't have to, because I get a lot of questions about celibacy, especially from women who are trying to practice it. They ask me, you know, how do you get through the temptation? How do you get through the peer pressure? How do you go as long as you did? Because I've known women who like literally have made the vow only lasted a year and a half and made the mistake like there there's so much women who are just starting and it's kind of like like that first year oh that first year is tough let me tell you something we look let's get into it that first year y'all i was having withdrawals like i really think i was sweating having withdrawals it was rough it was rough out here for your girl. I had to, I was just like, just keep the whole male species away from me. Cause I, especially coming from a promiscuous lifestyle to where all you do is have sex. It's like, Ooh, okay. All right. I need a minute. But by the time year two and three came around, I was so busy building myself and building the empire and building the turban movement. I really didn't even notice. Like y'all I'm on year four right now, really four and a half years. And when I tell you, I don't even realize it's been that long because my my mind is trained to not even really realize it. Now, do I miss compassion? Do I miss dating? Do I miss having a relationship? Yes, because unfortunately, and I posted this on Facebook a while ago, the hard part about celibacy is not the fact that you can't have sex. The hard part is finding somebody who's willing to accept that and go through it with you. So that's the hard part. It's not the no sex and people like, oh, I just can't do it. I can't go two weeks without sex. And da, 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 da. You can do it. You just don't want to do it. Okay. It's possible because if I can do it, then you can do it. Because listen, like I just said, my past, look, everybody was like, you celibate of all people? Exactly. So it's not you can't do it. You just don't want to do it. And you don't have to do it. But until you find, like I tell men that talk to me all the time, listen, if you don't agree with it, you don't want to accept it, that's fine. I don't get mad. I don't hold it against you because what you want in your life is what you want in your life. But this is my commitment. I'm not going to break it. So either you're going to deal with it or you're not. Point blank, period. You know, most of them don't. So that's they lost. <laughs> but, you know, that's a whole, like, I can really get into it if I wanted to. But y'all know I like to keep my videos short. And, you know, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and expand on it for episode seven, because it, this is a really important topic. It's a really interesting topic. And like I said, I've gotten a lot of questions about celibacy and about sex and about how, how it connects with love and how it connects re with relationships. And I can provide a lot of experience and feedback from it because I've been going through it for so long. So now we're going to switch to the difference between celibacy and abstinence, okay? We talking about two different things. And again, book time. So everybody or most people know about The Weight with Devon Franklin and Megan Good, right? This is a phenomenal book, by the way, because it's really hard to find books on celibacy and abstinence, but this one and No Ring, No Team by Brillen Bowman, these are two good books. So I'm gonna post them in the description uh, on where you can buy these, this one and the other one I was talking about. but. In this book, there is, 
the name of the part or the section is no sex you can't be serious but then it's break it's broken down into subsections so this one says celibacy versus abstinence i don't know if you guys can see that but it says celibacy versus abstinence i'm not going to read the whole thing just the part that i thought was really important um and it says this is exactly what i just said when we talk about celibacy the last thing we're doing is telling you to ignore sex. Just the opposite. We're suggesting that you acknowledge its power in your own desire. That way, if you choose to go without sex, you'll do so with your eyes open, understanding the realities and risks of having sex and not having it. Celibacy and the weight complement each other. And then in the beginning, there is a line where he defines celibacy versus abstinence. It says, before we move on, we need to draw a clear distinction between celibacy and abstinence. Most people think they're the same thing. They're not. Abstinence is simply refraining from sex. It's the absence of something with no greater meaning behind it. Except to us, celibacy is refraining from sex because of a vow or faith. It's abstinence with a purpose. You might abstain from sex involuntarily because you're not in a relationship. Celibacy is never involuntary. It, it's always the result of a conscious, deliberate choice. That's an important distinction. So, hand of a, round of applause, round of applause, round of applause. I love it. I love it. That was perfect. He defined it exactly how I define it. Listen, abstinence is when you abstain, abstain from sex for a certain period of time, depending on your circumstances. So you can be single or you can be not around women or not be enticed by women or so busy working and on your grind that you never get put in a situation. So next thing you know, six months go by. That's abstinence because you're abstaining from sex. But then the minute you meet somebody, it, you have sex. So it's, it's not that you choose not to have sex, it's that you're not put in a position to have sex. Versus with celibacy, it's a vow. It's something that you literally have to commit to. It's not temporary. It's not, okay, today I'm going to be celibate, tomorrow I'm not. Today I'm going to be celibate, a year from now I'm not. It's not that. And people, that aggravates me because that's, a, that's two different things. Abstinence and celibacy are literally different. So... When people say I'm celibate and they're not celibate, it's like, no, you don't know the struggle, okay? You're not celibate. You didn't make a vow in your faith to abstain from sex until marriage. You didn't do that. You're just not having sex right now. So we need to know the difference. Like vocabulary, people, okay? You can tell me you're abstinent, that's fine. But you can't say you're celibate because you're not, because I am. So I know. And sometimes I'll be thinking like, dang, I was like, maybe can I could just be abstinent, you know, and then like, trust me, I question my celibacy all the time, you know, especially four years in. It's like, OK. All right, God. Now, how long how long am I going to do this? But then I just go back to, you know what? God obviously has a man for me out there that's going to that's going to accept it. Devon Franklin was celibate for 10 years before he met Megan Good. 10 years. So there's no time on it. And you have to accept that. You have to accept that there is no time limit on your celibacy. You can't control when you're going to get married or meet the one that you're going to marry. And then your celibacy is over. You don't know when it's going to happen. It can happen a week from now. It can happen 10 years from now. So you have to be willing to accept that, that it takes time. And it's, it's the unknown. You have to be willing to accept the unknown. That you're not going to know when that special person is going to come into your life. Okay? So that's important. If you're going to practice celibacy, there's a lot that goes into it. And I tell people all the time, like, you have to be strong in your faith. You have to be ready to make that commitment and that decision. You have to accept what's going to come with it. The consequences... I've had men tell me I'm selfish. Listen, I done heard it all. <laughs> like, you got to be ready for that. And I'm ready. Like, I just go on about my business. Okay, well, there's the door. You can go ahead and see you later. But, you know, and you have to be comfortable with who you are. As long as you're comfortable with who you are and know your standards and know your worth, then you can do it. You can do it. 
Because it's like, I know who I am. I know what I'm worth. So you ain't talking about it. You're not talking about being real. You're not talking about having an intellectual conversation. You're not talking about mental intimacy and mental connection. Or let's get on this grind together. Then you're really not talking about nothing. Especially if you're only talking about sex. Like, okay, yeah. Let's just say, for instance, I wasn't celibate. And we have sex. Okay, so what else are we doing? Like, because I have a nonprofit. I have a for-profit. I have published books. I have all these things going on in my life. You know, I'm a, I'm a woman leader. I'm a lady boss. I'm a queen. What are you doing? You know? what? what okay, so are we going to talk? Or uh, what are your goals in life? Okay, do you have a career? Like, do you like kids? Because I got a lot of them. Like, teenagers. Remember that. But, you know, there's more that comes from that. Like, we're not about to just... Ha not now, because like I said, back in the day, I could just have sex and leave them. But we're not about to just do this whole, okay, let's just lay up and have sex thing, and then there's nothing else. Like, bro, we too old for that. Like, we still doing that? We really still doing that? Come on now. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> like, we got to grow up and mature one day. Like, we can't just, we, we, that's over with. That's stuff that teenagers do. You know, that's something that my older teenagers do. Like, we're not finna to, bro, no, we past that. I'm past that. Because if there isn't anything else, like, if I can't have a conversation with you that's really deep and we just really connect and talk about everything, society, um, black culture, the prop rape culture, domestic violence, shit, just thinking, period, you know, or faith religion the bible i'm going all in whatever you want to talk about let's talk about it we can debate we can look <laughs> i got it. i can go all day but if it's just sex then to me it's not worth it like unless it's just kind of like a one night stand like a heated and quitted talk. and then with women see y'all about to make me talk longer than i intended to then i love women to death okay i do because i am one but with women, when you have sex with them, and I told my guy friend this, because a lot of my guy friends come to me for advice. I said, listen, when you, you want to be out here having sex with women and that's all you want and you don't want a commitment or you don't want to be in a relationship, you got to understand that women aren't going to accept that too well. You know, some women are like, okay, so what's next? So what we doing? You know, you know how we do. So what is this? You know? So you have to be prepared to deal with the backlash that's going to come from that. Because you can't just be going around fucking women and then leave them and then not say, not expect them to react emotionally. Like, no, that's something I can't get with. I can't, like, if you're in a relationship and you having sex, that's cool. Or if it's, if y'all have equally established that, look, this is only sex, then that's fine. But y'all can do that in the beginning and eventually, that only lasts for so long. Eventually it's like, okay. So what are we doing? What's what's next? Like, are we going to become boyfriend and girlfriend? Like, like I said, we too old to be out here still trying to get some. And then at the same time, we want to do what we want to do. No, no, we're not. No, <laughs> that's not what it is. Like, sis about to be 30. Like, no. Okay. So be mature about it. Be smart about it. Know who you're having sex with. Okay. Because once you let that person enter into your body and you have that personal connection with them, like I just quoted in that book, that, that's it. That person is a part of you. So I'm not saying you got to be celibate, but I'm also saying you got to be aware of who you're having sex with if you're not in a relationship. You got to be protected because... If not, you're going to, I love my daddy to death, but he got 10 kids by 10 different women. You're going to be out here having babies. There's STDs. There's all kind of shit you can catch. Like I tell my teens, we do safe sex all the time. Look, condoms, all that birth control, all of it. Okay. Because sex can be a dangerous thing, even though it feels good. You know, you one time and you 18 years and, and you stuck with a baby and an unplanned baby. That you didn't plan, but God did. So if you're going to do it, be safe about it. Be smart about it. Know what's going to come from it. Because sex should have a purpose at our age. And if it's if you want to just get your groove on, then that's fine. But you better be doing it safely. And you better be prepared for what's going to come. Because that's, that's going to be cool for a little while. But then what happens after that? 
what happens when you get emotionally connected or one person is emotionally connected and the other person's not what you got two connections you got mental connection sexual connection mental in intimacy sexual intimacy so if you don't have mental intimacy sexual intimacy only lasts for so long and i always use the example what happens if we grow old together we marry we in our 80s and shit we buy we we can't have sex no more we is it's done then what's gonna keep us together mental intimacy i watched my grandma and grandpa be married their whole life they got married when they was 18 and died together at 83 and they had one child so what kept them together all them years because they were mentally connected and they loved each other that's the type of love i'm talking about see they don't make that kind of love no much that old school love right there that's that grandma grandpa love like we came through the struggle together and we gonna stick together that's what i'm talking about so you have to have both sides of intimacy and if you're not then it's kind of pointless like it's really kind of pointless so that's my little video on sex and celibacy i really like i said want to get into it but i'm gonna save that for episode seven next episode we're going to talk about healthy relationships so we're going to have Yoshiko Bernie um, from the Butterfly Project, which is a domestic violence survivor nonprofit. And we're going to talk about healthy relationships, whether it's teen relationship abuse, domestic violence, all the red, the red flags and signs you should look out for if you're in a dangerous relationship. Y'all know I'm all for domestic violence. R.I.P. Randy, that's purple for Randy. That's how I lost my dad. So it's important that we have these conversations about healthy relationships. Because if we're going to talk about love, sex, and relationships, then we have to talk about healthy relationships and how to know if your relationship is healthy or not. So that's going to be episode six coming out next Monday, which is like two days from when this video is coming out. But anyway... It's going to come out on Monday. Hold on, y'all. Y'all know I'm old. Monday, June 17th. So be prepared for that to come out. Healthy Relationships with Yoshiko Bernie. If you have any questions or comments on sex, celibacy, love, relationship. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't give y'all homework. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Y'all know I don't do my videos without homework. So your homework is this i want you to write short you don't have to write no paragraph no book and then like that but write about what sex means to you what does sex mean to you and i mean really think about it like you can go to your past you could talk about your present your future think about all that and then let me know what sex means to you like really think about it. it sounds like a broad question like a basic question but if you really think outside the box think about it and then let me know drop it in the comments email me dm me whatever you want to do my information is below contact me let me know you got homework okay you always got home i almost forgot you almost got me but you do have homework so join us on Monday, June 17th, as we talk about healthy relationships with Yoshiko Bernie, founder and CEO of The Butterfly Project. Make sure you guys follow them on Facebook and Instagram. And I will see you next Monday, next episode. And thank you for tuning in with Motivation With Me.